Hey folks, Valentin the Mad here, and today we'll talk about how to have a gritty experience without going for extreme gore. There are several games I'm following, mostly tactical shooters that lean towards varying degrees of realism, that when the topic of character responses comes up, the image that often comes to people's mind is dismemberment, guts, splitting heads open, scattering brains over the floor, and so on. Almost like the choice is between something very detailed or exaggerated and something very lackluster. Well, there is a middle ground. Essentially, but and gore effects are supposed to be the response for the action happening in combat. It can be realistic or exaggerated, simple or very detailed. This video is about the effects that, in my view, are the very basics for delivering a responsive, gritty feel without going over the top. So, let's get right into it. When it comes to response on the character himself, as I mentioned, detailed mutilation is by no means a must, but you gotta have a response at the point of impact, on the very spot you hit the character that looks decent enough. That, in my view, is much more important than dismemberment for most games. So, one option is a decal of a reasonably sized hole or a cut with a good amount of blood splatter. Without bump or parallax mapping, soaking or streaks, it will look decent on most of what you hit. It might stretch, you might have a bloody hole on top of a helmet, but for the most part, something like this will be good enough. The Source Engine Insurgency is a good example, though the hole is a bit large, and so is Code Modern Warfare 2019. A different possible variation I've seen several games do is just blood splatter. Perhaps trying to make a hole using simple decals just doesn't look very well in some specific games, so with a good color and interesting patterns, it definitely can be a decent solution. There is also a method of a blood splatter overlay on the character that only a part of it gets reviewed at and around the point of impact. It might not look as good as even a blood splatter decal, and there will be issues in games with slower attempt to kill, however, that is still much better than pre-made wounds or dividing a generic overlay into torso, face and each limb. And I do have to mention the response for explosives. So the easiest one is a burned bloody overlay on the character, which is a decent basic response. There is a somewhat more advanced and definitely more interesting thing I've seen in RDR2. Several pre-made variations of holes, scratches and bruises. The direction of the explosion, front or back, is also taken into account. So, no advanced shrapnel simulation, all pretty simple mechanics, but it does deliver very cool feedback. In the blood spilling aspect, the absolute base is proportional staining to the splashes or pouring you see on impacts. Those effects are meant to represent blood being spilled from the character on the environment and, while the stains don't have to be exactly accurate to the splashes or pouring, it absolutely should be proportional. A common issue in shooters is spawning blood only if there is a surface right behind the character. When there is nothing, the ground will be clear. If on the initial impact there is a blood before splash and stains are at all spawned, they should be spawned every time. A game that did this very well and went beyond actually is Insurgency Sandstorm. If there is no surface right behind the character, you see a stain on the ground. But if there was a wall or a different vertical surface, you will see a stain with a dripping down effect, which is really cool. The other very important basic feature is a blood puddle below the character after the fatal hit. This is one games generally do have to varying degrees of detail, and it matters a lot, especially for the aftermath. Which leads me right to it, the aftermath. Even if you do have really nice staining and pulling, having the mess start disappearing on you is pretty underwhelming. And so a feature that, in my opinion, is no less important, is an accessible config to let the blood and body stay. And of course, the keyword is config, option. Not everyone's machine can handle a lot of mess and some people may even want the bodies to vanish, for some form of gameplay or tactical advantage, so this should be just entirely optional. 
future proofing is a factor too. When I first played Fear around its release, I was very far from being able to max it, permanent mess was not remotely an option, but now the average PC can basically do it and, with mods, you can have every single hole in a wall, blood stain, body, wound, severed limb and even bullet shell stain. The difference it makes is very notable. When a game is good, which Fear absolutely is, people will be coming back to it even many years after release, so things like Resting Mess should be an accessible option. If not in the options menu, then at least in a config file. In the animations aspect, for an action game, without any advanced features, the base is very weighty response and death animations, followed by a ragdoll. Something that most games do have. Now some of the death animations can be fairly lengthy and that definitely makes a notable difference. In somewhat more realistic shooters, you'd preferably have some change of behavior for wounded but not down characters, but what matters most is a good response on a fatal or a disabling hit. So sending characters into a down but not dead state. This one is just an animation loop in most cases, so much more simple than a full set of injured movement and shooting animations. The other option is a somewhat lengthy animation on the fatal hit. Now active ragdoll is a more advanced feature, but I don't recall something like stranglehold, lengthy and simple for realistic tactical shooters. And as you can see, a good implementation of it can make just a massive difference. What perhaps matters the most though is a combination of all of the above. A proper amount of attention in every aspect the response on the character himself, the blood on the environment, the animations, and of course, configurable mess for the aftermath. A game doesn't have to be massively gory to deliver a good response. In fact, many games that do go for detailed or exaggerated effects often neglect some of the aspects which undermines the feel by a lot. Personally, I'll take a basic but solid system over detailed mutilation with blood fountains pouring right through the ground. So that is it for this video, do let me know what you think in the comments below. A list with all of the games shown is in the pinned comment. And consider supporting the channel on Patreon for more videos like this one and your regular response coverage. Until next time!